Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, getting a viewer question here, which is a, a good one. We've kind of talked around this before, but this is a nice pointed question, which is which is good. Uh, it's a question of editorial. So I've talked about editorial in the past, and this is one of those takes that, for whatever reason, people get um, hostile about because they 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 hear what I think they want to hear out of. I don't even I don't even know. So, uh, but this is this is a this is one of those topics where it's there's a problem. But just because there's a problem doesn't mean that uh, everybody's excused from it, if that makes any sense. But let's let's wade into the question here. It says, um, I'm thinking back to a few months ago when Joe Bennett accidentally put some anti-Semitic imagery into an issue of Immortal Hulk with the word jewelry being instead of jewelry. Um, I saw some pros like Jerry Ordway defending Bennett at the time, saying that backward sign lettering is tricky. Uh, it's hard to say, by the way, just as, as an aside, was that an accident or not? Uh, unfortunately, only Joe Bennett knows. He claims it was an accident. That's that's what that's his story. Um, you can you can either choose to believe him or not. In the end of the day, you know, that series is now over. He's no longer working with Marvel. He's off doing something else. I, I don't know if debating whether it was fake or not fake matters anymore because the, the, we're, we're, we're done. Um, if if he, it was a true accident then I feel bad for him because I, Jerry Ordway is correct, by the way, when you're doing backwards lettering and you're you know running pages out as fast as you can uh, because maybe the writer got the script too late, you know, just saying. Uh, but, it, you know, it, these mistakes can happen. Absolutely, they can happen. And I think, you know, it kind of gets to what the rest of this mail is about. My follow-up question was, where was editorial who should have been looking for something like this? Um, there are other examples like what I call Batgirl's bathroom from hell, where you have to ask, was anyone really trying at this point? Um, in, in the Batgirl situation, uh, let's see, how do I want to add? Cause I've asked and I, I got an, an actual, I think definitive answer on what went on here. And what went on here was it was drawn as somewhat of an Easter egg. It was drawn as a, as a joke to see if anybody would, would notice. Um, the artist wanted to put in some different elements. The artist was not an idiot and, and put the bathtub in front of the door just for, for laughs. Um, the artist knew what they were doing and, and was kind of curious if anybody would notice. Turns out people did. Anyway, um, I'm not an artist, but at the same time, shouldn't an editor have said, come on, you can do better than this. Why don't you work on redoing this one panel? If we're seeing that books have associate editors, regular editors, group editors, not sure if those positions are the same. They're not. Those are those are three different people. And finally, an editor-in-chief, fourth person. Wouldn't you assume these people would be more careful about what goes out with their name on it? Where exactly is the quality control? Or are we getting to a point where the companies decide the only way to get people talking about the books is if they put out something ugly or stupid enough to get people talking about it online? Has having standards become a bad thing all of a sudden? Would love to know your thoughts on this. Uh, so... Uh, and then uh, the the person who wrote the mail, you know, showed the uh, the sign from the Joe Bennett comic, the bathroom from hell with Batgirl, and then this um, kind of this Captain Marvel that skin shared around a lot, where she has like a bizarre nose uh, going in. I think three different things, by the way, looking at these these three panels, and and through over the course of the video, you'll see them on the screen. So the jewelry from Joe Bennett could have very easily been a mistake. It, it could have also been him trying to sneak a message into the comic like uh, Asaf did for um, X-Men Gold, number one. I think that was the comic where uh, they snuck in uh, anti-Jewish, uh, was it anti-Jewish or pro? I, I, I don't recall the exact uh, controversy at this moment. But that one, the artist intentionally did it. They put in, um, you know, coded messages uh, that, that were were, you know, were problematic and the guy got fired. With Bennett's case, hard to say. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, with the bathroom case, it was, a, uh, you know, an issue of the artist seeing if they could get away with kind of an Easter egg and it went through. With a Captain Marvel picture, it's just this artist, I don't think this artist is intentionally trying to draw something ugly. I think this is the artist's style based on, you know, other comics that, uh, that have been produced. This is how that artist draws and this is what this is what they produced, and you know that's just what you got. So I think that one in one case you got a maybe a mistake, maybe a coded message. In one case you got a uh, you know an Easter egg, and the other one you got just this is the artist style. But to your question, because this is where we get into uh, kind of the sticky part of this conversation. 
Um, right now, there are far too few editors at the big two. Uh, they're, they're DC removed a bunch. They have not rehired. They are absolutely understaffed and they are not capable of doing the job they need to do with current volumes of people. Just saying Marvel is in a similar state. They do not have the headcount in order to properly manage and do quality control for all the books they're producing. That is a fact. Um, I, I, but, and this is a very big, but, uh, just because they're understaffed doesn't make missing this stuff. Okay. Saying there's not enough staff. It doesn't mean like, Oh, well, we shouldn't worry about all this. No, you should worry about all this because mistakes are going out the door. Now, comic books are entertainment. They're not going to kill anyone. But imagine if you worked on a, you know, a pharmaceutical line and you're putting out medicine and the company did, you know, major cutbacks and there wasn't enough staff to properly quality control the medicine that was going out. And the, uh, so mistakes started getting made. So, you know, medicine went out that, that killed people or caused them to be very sick or weren't effective. Um, we, would you go, well, you know, it's understandable because we're short staffed. Of course not. That company is uh, veered into a, you know, not sustainable mode where it's not, you know, it's not able to actually do the core business that it does mode. That's the problem that comics currently have. Again, nobody's nothing's nobody's getting killed, but even though it's true the comic companies are understaffed, it doesn't make it okay that the comic companies are understaffed. It it, it means that they need to fix that problem. They can fix it in many ways. They can uh, hire more people. They can put out fewer books. Either of those. They can also work on on providing better training for the people who are there. I, I've talked to several editors who get next to zero training. Some editors are not aware that they should be checking on this. Some editors believe that if they push back on an artist and ask for redraws, that they are going to lose their job or it's going to create a they're 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 nervous to do it. Other editors push back too much and drive artists crazy doing that. Um, there's a lot of different cases here, but. It's uh, the one thing I will say I do not believe is happening. I don't believe this is a strategy where companies are trying to intentionally put in mistakes in order to get people talking. I, I don't think that would require a level of coordination and planning that just doesn't exist at these companies. They're, they're not capable of doing that level of planning. Um, it is, uh, this is a, a silly mistake. Um, it shouldn't be made. Um, I think that there's different lines to the quality. So for the Captain Marvel instance, you can say we don't want Captain Marvel being represented this way. This doesn't put our best foot forward for this character that we're trying to make a billion dollars off of. For Batgirl, it could be saying, ha this is kind of a funny joke, but don't, you know, this, this looks stupid. Of the three, by the way, um, I think the uh, Batgirl and Bathroom from Hell is the one that probably is the one I forgive the most in the sense of it is it is funny. If you, if you view it as, you know, this is a horrible quality control issue. And that's what Twitter did. Everybody got very up in arms about this, of, you know, an example of sliding uh, standards. But if you look at it as just this kind of absurd thing that is in this comic, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny panel. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I can't knock this too much. I mean, it's just, the whole thing is kind of ludicrous. Uh, that's the one that's easiest to explain. The Joe Bennett case is an example where let's say it was a mistake and Bennett didn't mean to do that. Absolutely. Once upon a time, if you get to the Glenn Greenwald uh, era of comics, editors were specifically told when the artist is drawing in letters into a comic, be it for sound effects or in some cases, when they were hand lettered or, you know, signs on a building or whatever else, when that's happening, always look at those areas very carefully for spelling mistakes or the artist, uh, you know, putting their friend's name in there as a joke and that, the, you know, there's, or mocking the company. This used to be one of the key areas that editors would get instructed to look at. And clearly that instruction is not happening now. I, I asked a, a current editor at Marvel, Hey, what are the things you're told to look for? And the answer I got back was not really anything. So that instruction is just not happening. And that is a case where whether it was a mistake for Bennett or not, it absolutely, absolutely should have been caught, uh, for, for sure. Um, the, uh, you know, so that, that's kind of how they all break down. I, I think, um, I, I think that the companies badly need more editors. I think in many cases they need different editors than the ones they have. I think some of the people they have are nepotism hires. They're people who are friends of a friend who worked in the same comic shop together and now they're, 
they're working in comics and they're not suited to do that job. Uh, I think when you go from working at Kinko's to being an editor, uh, I think that that's a, uh, that's maybe not the best progression of, you know, of, of skill sets of going from Kinko's to Marvel. I think that, uh, you know, and then you, you let's, let's put this person in charge of Avengers. Yeah. That's a bad idea. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It just is. Uh, that person is not going to be set up for success. Uh, again, I think that the company has some blame here. I think the people have some blame here. I'm not, this is what always people like to try and do their little, um, gotcha with me on. None of what I've said is an excuse that the editors are, should, you know, eh, well, then it doesn't matter. No, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. It matters a lot. It's just that there are many ways to fix this problem. More staff, different staff, more training for that staff. Anyway, thanks for the question. It's a great one. Appreciate it. If you have a question, you can shoot me an email, leave your comments below, and thanks for listening.